Okay, it's time to break the cycle. You wanna cook fish, but then you scare yourself. Uh, it's too hard. Eh, it's better at the restaurant. No, not anymore. We're gonna work together to change that. guide on how to cook fish across the board. Before we get to that, I'm extremely excited to announce that this video is sponsored by Bounty, and uh, drum roll please. The Quicker Picker Upper. Who's helping me provide this quick and easy recipe for you? Spend less time cooking and cleaning and more time soaking up the sun with friends and family. And the homies, obviously. We're gonna run through the three most basic ways to cook fish. Searing, frying, and well, baking or roasting in that case. There's a very specific way to do this. There's a reason why restaurants have this nailed down, right? It's not a secret, it's just a matter of paying attention and knowing what to do, which we're gonna run through. So with that said, let's make this, shall we? I figured since the scariest one for most people is frying, let's just rip the dang band-aid off and do it. Don't be scared. So start by heating up two quarts of oil in a large heavy bottom pot, something like a four to five quart pot, to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. Now let's get our breading station going. To make your batter, in a medium sized bowl, mix together one and a quarter cup or 190 grams of all purpose flour, one tablespoon or nine grams of kosher salt, one tablespoon or seven grams of garlic powder, and one tablespoon or seven grams of smoked paprika. Whisk that together and then realize you didn't add the black pepper, so also some fresh cracked black pepper. Whisk that again. Once thoroughly combined, you're gonna add one can of beer, which is approximately 12 ounces or 354.882 grams. Then halfway through that, also realize you forgot to add your egg. Real good, Josh. Glad to see all the fine dining work has helped. So yeah, one egg to, the, to all that. Whisk until all of your ingredients are thoroughly combined, and now you've got your batter. As for our le poisson of choice, that's Spanish for fish. <laughs> I'm joking, it's French. You'll need one to one and a half pounds of a really nice cod. Slice those into pieces however you want. You can cut little fillets, you can cut them into fish sticks. Just make sure that they're all cut evenly shaped because they're gonna cook differently. Now frying these is very, very simple. First, you're just gonna toss them into plain all-purpose flour. I had like maybe two cups in here. Now toss your pieces of fish in the flour. Make sure to coat every little crevice and then sort of pat them between your hands to shake off the excess and reveal a beautifully dusted piece of fish. Then dunk your fish into your batter, then carefully drop it into your oil, dropping away from you. Unless you want that hot oil to splash in your dang face. And then just fry that for about seven minutes or until golden brown, and then just rinse and repeat with the rest. It genuinely is that easy. It doesn't require a whole lot of frilly, fancy things. Now once you're done frying, let me show you a little trick that you can use bounty paper towels with. Now you could just drain this on a wire rack, but you'll get even crispier fish if you drain it directly on top of a paper towel so it absorbs the oil. Now while it's still hot and fresh out of the fryer, make sure to season it immediately with kosher salt and optionally some togarashi. Then remove the paper towel and let it cool the rest of the way on a wire rack. And that's it, that's your beer battered fried fish, but wait, you can't just have beer batter fish without a nice horseradish cream, which is just fancy chef talk for tartar sauce. In a medium sized bowl, combine half a cup or 115 grams of mayonnaise, better be homemade, half a cup or 115 grams of sour cream, one tablespoon or 10 grams of fresh grated horseradish. When I say fresh grated, I mean like the real stuff, all right? I cannot stress this enough, big flavor. You can also omit it if you don't have it. Half a bunch of chives that have been very finely sliced. Very finely, you understand? I'm tired of these thick, cut chives, it's yucky. And one whole dill pickle finely diced. And also the zest and the juice of one whole lemon. Finish with a little bit of salt and pepper to taste, whisk all that together, and well, I mean, well that's it, that's the sauce. Now you get your crispy fish, you got the sauce, give it a little dip, and enjoy. Okay, it's fried fish twine. Oh God. Beer battered. Mm, no. Good thing I have the quicker picker upper. If you're the type of person that just goes to restaurants and only eats fried fish, but you never made it, let this be your call. So delicate, so perfectly cooked, and it's incredibly easy. This is the kind of stuff that once you eat it, it's got you talking infomercial. Call 1-800, this is really crispy and good. Thank you. Now let's talk about searing crispy skin fish. 
Scoring the skin works just fine to keep it flat, but you can also do it without that. I like to use a 10 inch stainless steel pan, heat up about two and a half tablespoons or 35 grams of a high heat oil, enough to coat the bottom of the pan nicely. Heat that over medium high heat until extremely hot and nearly smoking, season your fish fillet of choice with salt and pepper and any spices you want. Now lay your fish in the hot pan, skin side down, and immediately gently press down on the flesh so every square inch of the skin touches the pan. Keep holding it down until the most part of it adheres or it's nice and flat, then just let that sear for two to three minutes or until the skin is nice and crisp. You can see the cook on the fish coming halfway up its flesh and it loosens relatively easily. Work your spatula underneath carefully, flip and sear an additional two to three minutes. Depending on its thickness, you may need to cook it a little longer, but I like a nice medium on most fish, with the exception of salmon or tuna. Now pull that out of the pan and enjoy immediately. The testament of a good cook. Listen carefully. Oh. <laughs> and this has been sitting for like 15 minutes because I had to take pictures. And yet, somehow, the simple sear, just oil, salt, pepper, is easily my favorite out of all three of these, somehow. I, I, I. Last, let's talk about the obligatory, but still yummy, crusted salmon. So you're gonna wanna start with four salmon fillets. I actually prefer to cut my own fillets by hand, but wait, notice how the board is just going everywhere, brother. And if you're working with sharp knives, you need to secure your board. Now here's a cool little trick with Bounty. Take a couple strips of paper towels, dampen them with some water, and lay them nice and flat where your board's gonna go. Lay your board on top, press to it here, and now, look at that. It, it actually does work really well. It's kind of shocking. Like I said, I cut my own fish filet from a two pound side of salmon. It's just, you know, you can control the size more. Yeah, it's better. This is king salmon. Get those lined up on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, and let's make our topping. For the glue that's gonna hold the crunchy, mix together a quarter cup or 60 grams of mayonnaise, two and a half tablespoons or 35 grams of whole grain mustard, and three cloves of fresh grated garlic, also a generous amount of salt. Mix that together until thoroughly combined, and well, that's it. Also, if you wanna get extra bougie, you can add a little bit of fresh grated black truffle, but you know, to flex or not to flex, that is the question. Now, because I'm trying to look out for the homies, I did make the crunchy topping gluten-free. So to make that, simply combine crushed nuts, consisting of half a cup or 45 grams of toasted walnuts, and half a cup or 45 grams of toasted pecans, followed by half a cup or 40 grams of fresh grated Parmigiano Reggiano, like the good stuff, a small handful of chopped fresh parsley, salt and pepper to taste, mix that together until thoroughly combined, and we're ready to roll. Now take your salmon fillets, season each of them on all sides lightly with salt, and brush them with a generous portion of your garlicky mustard mayo stuff, and then sprinkle on a generous amount of your crunchy, cheesy nut topping. Nice. Once all of your pieces of fish are ready, place them in an oven that's been set to 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 15 minutes, or until cooked to a nice medium rare. Now, I know some people like it medium, cook it to your liking, all right? I don't wanna hear people complaining. And that's it, that's crusted fish. Bro. Moist. Obviously, I put truffle in the crust, so it's extra yummy yummy. It's easy to put together, it's gluten-free, it's healthy. What more do you want? I'm appealing all crowds right now. But do you wanna know what else is pleasing all crowds? B-roll. And that is it. So we made multiple kinds of fish out of my face. They all turn out absolutely perfect. Thank you again to Bounty for sponsoring this video, for providing 10 million meals to Feeding America. Stay tuned for next week because I will be bringing you another special using the help of the Quicker Picker Upper, aka Bounty. And I also like to call them Peyton Cow. Uh, also, we're back in the cabinet. A lot of people were not happy being in the pantry, which I was kind of surprised about. So fine, you got downgraded because you asked to downgrade. This is what you left. You left this huge space. I also got you guys, you guys were requesting tables and chairs, so. I also wanted to show you that I got you some tables and chairs, little baby ones. Okay, anyway, with that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.